If you've ever been interrupted in a meeting to be told that your numbers don't add up, you'll know how annoying that can be, especially when it's just rounding error that has caused the problem in the first place, and anyone could see that. Well, in this video, I'm going to show you a very simple technique as to how you can avoid that ever happening again. In order to achieve this, we're going to be using the round formula. I'm going to talk you through this formula and how you can use it to ensure that any set of numbers all balances and will stand up to any smart aleck in the room with a calculator desperate to pick fault. So I'm John, this is Up for Excel. Make sure you subscribe if you want more time saving techniques and tips for Excel. Right, let's get on with the show. Okay, so imagine that you've got to present some data in a let's say a PowerPoint presentation or something, and you, you're doing this to at a pretty high level and you're just showing how the company sales has moved from last month to this month. And you pulled together a little bit of data that shows that, and we've got it here on the screen. Last month, your sales were around about 82. You've got three products, X, Y, they've both increased. You've launched a product, Z, but there's one less day in the month, so you're taking account of that as well. Um, and you've tied it up a bit, but to be honest, it looks awful with the amount of decimal points all over the place in the numbers. So, of course, the first thing that you're likely to do, I would imagine, is format the numbers so that you can show a different number of decimal places. So, Control-1 brings up the Format Cells dialog box here. We'll pick a number... We'll say no decimal places because we're going to keep this at a high level and we'll click OK. And there we go. You think. Now, I guarantee that if you've got a big enough meeting, there'll be some smart aleck in there with a calculator or maybe just doing a bit of mental maths that'll say, hold on a second. Last month's sales were 82. And then we're going to add 1, 83, add another 9, 92, add another 2, 94, take off 4. That should be 90. Why are you showing 91? Mm. Now, at the moment somebody does something like that, it's obvious it's a rounding issue. It's always obvious. But the problem is it detracts from what you are trying to present. And if you are presenting this data, it can... Even if it doesn't throw you off track and you just sort of brush it off as, oh, it's obviously a rounding error, it just calls into question the credibility of your numbers at a time when you really don't want that to be happening. So the way to get around this is to be rounding your numbers before you even start. Now, to do that, you're going to need the round formula. This is a formula we can use that physically rounds the number that Excel recognises. All it is, is you have the round word, you then open uh, parentheses, you type in the number that you want to round, or in the case we're gonna use it, we simply reference the cell we want to round, and then the number of digits we want to round to. So a couple of examples here that I've shown, if we want to round 12.15 to one decimal place, we would literally type round, open brackets or parentheses, 12.15 comma one to signify we want one decimal place. If we put comma zero in there, we round it to no decimal places, which would just give us the number 12 because the 0.15 would round down. And then we can actually put negative numbers in here as well. And that will round to you know, tens or hundreds or whatever. So we've got there round 12.15 comma minus one. That would round to 10 because it's basically saying we want to go one place to the left of the decimal and round. Right, so the, the reason that we get these issues here in Excel is because although this may say one on screen, as soon as you click on it, you can see that it's actually being stored as 0.9 course is the correct number, but 0.9 is actually what Excel believes that number is and it will use that in any kind of sum formula or anything like that that uh, you apply to that number. It will not use what is showing on screen. So if we apply the round formula to this number, 
we can get it Excel to treat it as if it were the number one in any other in any results of any other formulas. So we are going to do that right now. So we enter the equal sign, cut round to put in that function there. Open a bracket. Now the number, we will click on the actual cell with the number in it because we're going to be copying and pasting this formula around. And then we don't want any decimal places at all. So we're going to put a zero on there for now. Okay. Now, if we just double click on that to give that out, you can see we get a series of identical numbers there. Now, if we apply that one to the top there as well, and then if we instead copy this, this is a sum formula, which is just summing everything above, copy that across to there, you can now see that we're getting a number 90. In other words, Excel is now adding up what we see on screen and giving us the result of what we see on screen. Now that can be very useful because it stops your numbers being called into question. Now that's all very well, you might say, but we're now showing this month's sales in 90 and we know darn well that actually they're closer to 91. So we don't want to mislead. Uh, and certainly if we're going to be showing that sales figure anywhere else, then we just need to be a bit careful of that. So what we can do is we can add a line for roundings. Now you might think, well, this all seems like a lot of palaver when, you know, you could just literally just leave it as it was. But I still think that if you show roundings, you're being more upfront about what you're presenting in the first place. And this obviously is a very simple example. I've only got four reconciling items on there. I mean, you could have uh, maybe 10 items. You could be talking, um, you know, showing numbers that are three or four uh, significant figures. And in that case, your roundings could be, you know, anywhere up to sort of four or five potentially. I mean, so, I think it's best to show a roundings line if you're going to do something like this. And I honestly think it just makes things look more credible when all your numbers add up and anyone can crawl all over them, see that this matches that, that if you add those numbers up, they, they tally, et cetera, et cetera. Because people do do that. And the last thing you want is your numbers being called into question. So what we're going to do here simply is we're going to insert another row and I'm going to call this row the name on here, roundings. Roundings. Okay. And all I need to do here to get this to match is I need to make that equal the total sales figure and then deduct everything above that's going into my total. Now, if I do that, straight away, you're going to see we've got roundings of one and we've got this month's sales of one. So if I now highlight that, paint the formats from there to there, I can now hide that column if I like. And we now have a nice little summary table. Everything stacks up. No one's going to be able to pick fault with that. I can go straight onto a PowerPoint slide and your numbers are looking good. So there you have it. Using the round formula to make sure no one's ever going to be able to pick fault with your numbers again. So I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're up for Excel, make sure you subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell icon to get reminded of next video coming up.